Welcome back to the Neurology Channel, your go-to source for all things related to neurology and the fascinating world of neurological disorders. Today, we're delving into a condition that affects the eyes and muscles, known as ocular myasthenia gravis. Before we dive in, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on the latest neurology topics. All right, let's get started. What is ocular myasthenia gravis? Ocular myasthenia gravis, or OMG for short, is a neuromuscular disorder that primarily affects the muscles that control eye movements. It's a subtype of the broader myasthenia gravis condition, which can involve other muscles in the body. Ocular myasthenia gravis, OMG, is a rare neuromuscular disorder that primarily affects the muscles responsible for eye movement and control. It is a subtype of the broader condition known as myasthenia gravis, MG. MG is characterized by muscle weakness and fatigue that worsen with use and improve with rest. While MG can affect various muscle groups throughout the body, OMG specifically targets the muscles that control eye movement. Here are some key points to understand about ocular myasthenia gravis. Symptoms. The hallmark symptoms of OMG are related to eye muscle weakness and include ptosis, drooping of the upper eyelids which can impair vision, diplopia, Double vision, where a person sees two images of a single object. Ophthalmoparesis, weakness or paralysis of the muscles that move the eyes, leading to difficulty in controlling eye movements. Excessive blinking, due to the effort to compensate for weakened eye muscles. Fluctuating symptoms. One distinguishing feature of OMG is the fluctuation of symptoms. They tend to worsen with prolonged use of the affected eye muscles, such as during activities that require sustained focus like reading or driving and often improve with rest. In OMG, the communication between the nerves and muscles at the neuromuscular junction becomes disrupted. Normally, when our brain sends signals to our muscles to contract, a chemical called acetylcholine is released, allowing the muscles to contract smoothly. What is acetylcholine? Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical messenger that plays a vital role in transmitting signals between nerve cells, neurons, and between neurons and target cells, such as muscle cells or other neurons. It is one of the most well-known and extensively studied neurotransmitters in the human body, and it plays diverse roles in both the central nervous system, CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, PNS. Here are some key aspects of acetylcholine. Chemical structure. Acetylcholine is a small molecule composed of an acetyl group, CH3CO, attached to a choline molecule. Synthesis. Acetylcholine is synthesized within neurons in a two-step process. First, choline, an essential nutrient obtained from the diet, is taken up into the neuron. Then, acetyl-CoA, derived from metabolism, is combined with choline in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme choline acetyltransferase, CHAT, to form acetylcholine. Storage. Acetylcholine is stored in vesicles at the axon terminals of neurons. When an electrical impulse, action potential, travels down the neuron, it reaches the axon terminal and triggers the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft, the small gap between the neuron and the target cell. Receptors. Acetylcholine exerts its effects by binding to specific receptors on the target cell's membrane. There are two primary types of acetylcholine receptors. Functions. In the CNS, acetylcholine is involved in processes related to attention, memory, and learning. It plays a role in the regulation of wakefulness and arousal. In the PNS, acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter responsible for transmitting signals from motor neurons to muscle cells, leading to muscle contraction. This function is crucial for all voluntary and many involuntary movements. Acetylcholine also plays a role in the autonomic nervous system, where it controls functions like heart rate, digestion, and salivation. Degradation. After acetylcholine has transmitted its signal, it is rapidly broken down to prevent continuous stimulation. The enzyme acetylcholinesterase, H, catalyzes the hydrolysis of acetylcholine into choline and acetate, effectively terminating its action at the synapse. Clinical Significance. Abnormalities in the production or degradation of acetylcholine can lead to various medical conditions. For example, a deficiency in acetylcholine can result in muscle weakness and conditions like myasthenia gravis, where the immune system attacks acetylcholine receptors, leading to muscle fatigue. On the other hand, drugs that inhibit acetylcholinesterase activity can be used to treat conditions like Alzheimer's disease by increasing acetylcholine levels in the brain. 
In summary, acetylcholine is a crucial neurotransmitter with diverse functions in the nervous system and the peripheral tissues. Its role in transmitting signals from neurons to target cells is fundamental to various physiological processes, including muscle contraction, cognition, and autonomic functions. Understanding acetylcholine's function and regulation is essential in both neuroscience and clinical medicine. What is the neuromuscular junction? The neuromuscular junction, NMJ, is a specialized synapse or junction between a motor neuron and a skeletal muscle fiber. It is a critical component of the nervous system responsible for the transmission of nerve impulses to muscle fibers, ultimately leading to muscle contraction. Understanding the neuromuscular junction is essential for grasping the fundamentals of muscle physiology and movement. Here are key aspects of the neuromuscular junction. Structure, motor neuron, the nerve cell that originates in the spinal cord and extends to the muscle is called a motor neuron. These neurons are responsible for carrying electrical impulses from the central nervous system to the muscle. Motor end plate. This is the specialized region of the muscle fiber membrane, sarcolemma, that receives the nerve signal. The motor end plate contains numerous receptors for the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, ACH, synaptic cleft. The small gap or space between the motor neuron's axon terminal and the motor end plate is known as the synaptic cleft. It is where the nerve impulse is transmitted to the muscle fiber. Neurotransmitter release. When an action potential, electrical impulse, reaches the end of a motor neuron's axon, it triggers the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium ions influx into the axon terminal, which in turn leads to the fusion of synaptic vesicles containing acetylcholine, AC, with the neuron's cell membrane. AC is released into the synaptic cleft by exocytosis in response to the calcium influx. Neurotransmitter binding. Acetylcholine released into the synaptic cleft diffuses across the gap and binds to receptors on the motor end plate of the muscle fiber. This binding results in a change in the muscle fiber's membrane potential, leading to the initiation of an action potential in the muscle fiber. Action potential propagation. The binding of H to receptors triggers an action potential to propagate along the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber and deep into the muscle via a system of transverse T tubules. The T tubules ensure that the action potential reaches deep into the muscle fibers, allowing for uniform contraction throughout the muscle. Muscle contraction. The action potential in the muscle fiber ultimately leads to the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, a network of membranes within the muscle cell. Calcium ions bind to the contractile proteins actin and myosin, leading to the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction, where myosin filaments pull actin filaments closer together, resulting in muscle shortening, contraction. Muscle contraction continues as long as AC is present in the synaptic cleft and action potentials are generated in the muscle fiber. Termination of signaling. The action of acetylcholine is terminated by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, HA, which rapidly breaks down ACH into acetate and choline. This breakdown of ACA ensures that the muscle fiber can relax and that muscle contraction is not sustained indefinitely. Clinical significance. Disorders or conditions that affect the neuromuscular junction, such as myasthenia gravis, can lead to muscle weakness and fatigue. Drugs that target the neuromuscular junction, such as neuromuscular blockers, are used in surgical procedures to induce muscle relaxation. In summary, the neuromuscular junction is a specialized and essential component of the nervous system that allows motor neurons to control skeletal muscle contraction. It involves the release of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which initiates a cascade of events leading to muscle fiber excitation and contraction. Understanding the neuromuscular junction is fundamental to the study of muscle physiology and movement. In OMG, the immune system mistakenly produces antibodies that attack the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cells. This interferes with the signals, causing muscle weakness and fatigue primarily in the eye muscles. A disrupted neuromuscular junction refers to a malfunction or impairment in the normal functioning of the synapse between a motor neuron and a skeletal muscle fiber. This disruption can lead to various neuromuscular disorders and conditions, which can affect muscle contraction and overall muscle function. So what are the common symptoms of ocular myasthenia gravis? Ocular myasthenia gravis, OMG, primarily affects the muscles that control eye movement and eyelid function. 
The hallmark symptoms of OMG are related to eye muscle weakness and can vary in severity from person to person. Common symptoms of ocular myasthenia gravis include ptosis, drooping eyelids. One of the most characteristic symptoms of OMG is ptosis, which is the drooping of one or both eyelids. Ptosis occurs due to weakness in the muscles that elevate the eyelids, levator palpebrae superioris. As these muscles weaken, the affected eyelids may gradually lower, obstructing part of the visual field. Diplopia, double vision. Double vision is a common complaint in people with OMG. It occurs when the eye muscles responsible for coordinating eye movement become weak or fatigued. This leads to the perception of two distinct images, making it challenging to focus on objects or read. Eye fatigue. Ocular muscle weakness can lead to eye fatigue, especially during activities that require sustained eye movement, such as reading or watching TV. The fatigue can result in worsening ptosis and diplopia as the day progresses. Strabismus, eye misalignment. Strabismus occurs when the eyes are misaligned, causing one eye to turn in a different direction. Weakness in the eye muscles can lead to strabismus, contributing to diplopia. Variable symptoms. One unique feature of OMG is the variability of symptoms. Symptoms may fluctuate throughout the day and can be more pronounced with fatigue, stress, or physical exertion. Some individuals with OMG may experience symptom remission, while others may progress to generalized myasthenia gravis, which involves muscle weakness in other parts of the body. Blinking difficulty. Weakening of the eyelid muscles may affect the ability to blink effectively, potentially leading to dry eyes and irritation. It's important to note that OMG primarily affects the eye muscles but may progress to involve other muscle groups in some cases. Additionally, OMG can occur in isolation or as an initial presentation of myasthenia gravis that eventually affects other muscles, such as those involved in facial expression, swallowing, or limb movement. Diagnosis and evaluation. If you suspect you or someone you know may have OMG, it's crucial to seek medical attention. Diagnosis typically involves the diagnosis and evaluation of ocular myasthenia gravis, OMG, typically involve a combination of medical history assessment, clinical examination, specialized tests, and sometimes consultation with specialists. Due to the variable and fluctuating nature of OMG symptoms, obtaining an accurate diagnosis is crucial for appropriate treatment and management. Here's an overview of the diagnostic process for OMG. Medical history. The initial step in the diagnostic process involves taking a detailed medical history. The healthcare provider will ask the patient about their symptoms, their onset, duration, and any factors that worsen or alleviate them. A family medical history may also be relevant as some autoimmune and neuromuscular conditions can have a genetic component. It's essential for the patient to provide a complete history of their overall health, past medical conditions, surgeries, medications, and lifestyle factors. Physical examination. A comprehensive physical examination is performed with a focus on evaluating eye muscle function, eyelid movement, and any signs of ptosis, drooping eyelids, diplopia, double vision, or strabismus, eye misalignment. The healthcare provider may assess the patient's ability to sustain eye movement and observe any variations in symptoms during the examination. Ice pack test. In some cases, an ice pack test may be performed. This test involves applying a cold compress, ice pack, to the affected eyelid for a brief period. Improvement in ptosis following the ice pack application can be suggestive of myasthenia gravis. Blood tests. Blood tests may be conducted to check for specific antibodies associated with myasthenia gravis, such as anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies or anti-muscle specific kinase, musk antibodies. These tests help confirm the autoimmune nature of the condition. Electrodiagnostic studies. Specialized tests, such as single-fiber electromyography, SFEMG, and repetitive nerve stimulation, RNS, may be performed to assess neuromuscular function and identify abnormalities in nerve-to-muscle communication. SVMG can help detect defects in neuromuscular transmission, which are characteristic of myasthenia gravis. Imaging studies. Imaging studies like chest CT scans may be ordered to assess the thymus gland, as abnormalities in the thymus are associated with myasthenia gravis. Thymoma, a tumor of the thymus gland, can be found in some individuals with myasthenia gravis. Consultation with specialists. In complex or uncertain cases, consultation with a neurologist, 
Neuromuscular specialist or ophthalmologist may be necessary to confirm the diagnosis and determine the most appropriate treatment plan. Response to medication. Sometimes, a patient's response to medication, such as cholinesterase inhibitors, e.g. pyridostigmin, can provide diagnostic clues. Improvement in ocular symptoms with these medications may support the diagnosis of OMG. Follow-up and monitoring. After a diagnosis of OMG is made, regular follow-up with healthcare providers is essential to monitor symptoms, adjust treatment as needed, and assess overall health. It's important to note that the diagnostic process for OMG can be complex due to the variable nature of symptoms and the need to rule out other conditions that may mimic myasthenia gravis. Collaboration between the patient, primary care physician, neurologist, and other specialists is critical for accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. Treatment options. Now, let's talk about treatment options for ocular myasthenia gravis. Treatment options for ocular myasthenia gravis, OMG, aim to manage and alleviate the specific symptoms affecting the eye muscles and improve the patient's quality of life. The choice of treatment depends on the severity of symptoms, the patient's response to therapy, and individual factors. Here are common treatment options for OMG. Medications, cholinesterase inhibitors. These drugs, such as pyridostigmin, mestinon, enhance the transmission of nerve signals to the muscles by preventing the breakdown of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter. They can help improve muscle strength and reduce ptosis and diplopia. Dosage may need to be adjusted to achieve the best balance between symptom relief and side effects. Immunosuppressive medications in cases of autoimmune OMG, where the immune system attacks acetylcholine receptors, immunosuppressive drugs may be prescribed. Common options include corticosteroids, e.g., prednisone, and other immunosuppressants, e.g., azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetal. These medications aim to suppress the immune response and reduce the production of autoantibodies. Monoclonal antibodies. Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody that targets B cells involved in the autoimmune process. It may be considered in cases of refractory or severe OMG. Intravenous immunoglobulin, IVIG, IVIG therapy involves infusions of concentrated antibodies from healthy donors. It can provide temporary relief from symptoms and is often used in acute exacerbations of OMG or when rapid symptom improvement is needed. Thymectomy. Thymectomy, the surgical removal of the thymus gland, may be considered for patients with OMG, especially when they have thymic abnormalities or a thymoma, a tumor of the thymus gland. Thymectomy can lead to long-term remission or improvement in symptoms. Eye patch and prism glasses. Temporary eye patches can help manage ptosis and diplopia by covering the affected eye and improving vision. Prism glasses may be prescribed to alleviate double vision by redirecting light rays and aligning images. Lifestyle modifications. Patients with OMG are advised to manage energy levels and minimize activities that worsen symptoms. Taking breaks during tasks that require sustained eye use, using artificial tears for dry eyes, and avoiding stress are important lifestyle considerations. Supportive measures. Supportive measures include using artificial tears or lubricating eye drops to manage dry eyes and maintaining good general health through a balanced diet, regular exercise, and stress reduction techniques. Regular follow-up. Close monitoring by a healthcare provider, typically a neurologist or neuromuscular specialist, is essential to assess treatment effectiveness, adjust medications as needed, and address any changes in symptoms. It's important for individuals with OMG to work closely with their healthcare team to develop a personalized treatment plan. OMG is a variable condition, and treatment may need to be adjusted over time to achieve optimal symptom control. In some cases, individuals may experience long periods of remission, while others may require ongoing management to minimize symptoms and maintain eye muscle function. Joining support groups or connecting with others who have OMG can be incredibly beneficial. It helps you share experiences, coping strategies, and find emotional support. And that wraps up our overview of ocular myasthenia gravis. Remember, if you suspect you have this condition or know someone who does, seek medical advice promptly. Early diagnosis and treatment can make a world of difference. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who may benefit. And don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating insights into the world of neurology. Thanks for joining us on the Neurology Channel. Stay curious, stay informed, and take care of your neurological health. See you in the next video.